This is an Insane Cast production. You're listening to Thanks for Watching the All Movies Podcast. With your cast, Beth, DJ, Jimmy. And now, now thanks for watching. watching. Welcome to Thanks for Watching episode 55, or should I say the long awaited episode 55. Holy moly. That a week in the making. A whole week. A whole week. That's right. Or is it or two weeks? Whole. Something like that. I uh, have no idea. Me neither. Okay. Well, hey. Coming to you from sunny San Diego, I'm DJ. And then hanging out Hi, in. DJ. Hi there. And then hanging out way up there, uh, up north in uh, Riverside. You nailed it. One in a row. I did it. Yes. It's me. The person formerly known as Reverend Jim. Oh, yes. Reverend Jim. <laughs> I like those. I love nicknames. Speaking of nicknames, we have a special guest. Right. Yes. Right, right. Yes, and he is further south than San Diego. <laughs> Not much. Not much. I'm, I'm technically in San Diego. Tech, oh, that's right, huh? Technically, it's like San Diego County and all that stuff, hey? Yeah, yeah San Diego City proper. Oh, rock on. Okay, I had no idea. See, that's wow. I've what only... neighborhood? What neighborhood uh, are you in? Technically, we're in a neighborhood called Hamashaw Lomita, but we, te- wow. we tell people... We tell people Lemon Grove or Encanto, whatever works for you. Right. I know right where you're talking about. That's scary. Excellent. Hamashala. Say it again? Yeah. <laughs> Hamasha Lomita. Okay. Hamasha Lomita. Hamasha, Hamasha is not spelled like ham. No, it's with a J. A, yeah. It's Jamacha. Jamacha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, Just Joe. Thank you for having just me. Just Joe from Jamacha. Yay! And just Joe, he's he's coming to us from a different show. The- oh yeah. So uh, I stream on Twitch. I play video games and have a great time with the chat. If you want to follow me there, you can go to www.twitch.tv slash apostle underscore OFC. We stream three nights a week. It's a lot of fun. We do music requests and it's great. We could throw that link up on our website, too. Sounds good. That'd be awesome. I think we need to do that, and we need to uh, broadcast uh, Apostle underscore OFC. OFC, yep. On the uh, Twitter paters. And the, you can even put it on Google Plus, DJ. Oh, yeah. I mean, sure, I would go on Google Plus. <laughs> <laughs> For all the gamers hanging out on Google Plus. <laughs> yes, at least five of them. They're closet gamers in there. <laughs> what? What? Uh, what do you? What's your? Um, what's your game of choice or games well, of choice? Uh, I started streaming with a game called MechWarrior Online. Uh, I've been okay. a big part of that community for a long time. Uh, I went to MechCon last year and got to meet a bunch of other Mech streamers. Uh, okay. Lately, we've been breaking it up. We've been playing some first-person shooters. Uh, we do horror games on Thursdays. Uh, it's it's fun, man. We try to break it up and make it make it fun for everybody. So, first person shooter. What is uh, what is kind of your game du jour? For uh, this last week, I did Star Wars Battlefront Two. Uh, oh, okay. I've done some Escape from Tarkov. Um, Anthem just came out. We're playing a little bit of that. Some Apex Legends. You know, some of the right. the newer popular games, and then I'll play some stuff that's more just self indulgent for me, but. It's more about just putting on putting on a show for the for people watching right. and having fun with them. That, that's really interesting that you're on the show because um, I am I, I'm in the throes of trying to develop a, a how to bring uh, gaming leagues on as as a client. I I, I really want to break into that market not because I'm a gamer, not because any of that stuff i just i i'm intrigued by the amount of money that's made in the in the esports yeah arenas yeah. um four or five years they're going to surpass everybody but the nfl uh, maybe uh they will because the other leagues don't really make a whole lot of money 
when you get when you get a guy like Mark Cuban saying I'm investing in esports. Yeah, that pretty, goes a long way for sure. That's a yeah. that's a pretty pretty solid. Yeah. But enough about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm curious about the you said the a horror thing on Thursdays. Yeah. Yeah, so we do Thriller Thursdays, and I'll play either Resident Evil, I'll play Dead by Daylight, which are some thriller games where you're trying to escape being killed, basically, in horrific horror-style ways. Uh, you know, it's like horror movies come to life. It's 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 fun. That, that sounds, sounds like a blast. Horrific. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it reminds one, me. One, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, it reminds me of uh, Las Vegas, a friend of ours. Um, he he had like this huge building. He, it wasn't his, but he was able to. He rented it or what have you. Um, and we would have this huge party, and a whole bunch of us would get together, and for like twenty five minutes, we would scatter around the building, and somebody was zombie zero. And uh-huh. we would have Nerf guns and shoot each other with these Nerf guns. If there was a zombie, we shot it and it had to stop for like, I think it was 10 seconds while we escaped. We were only allowed six bullets, so we had to reuse the bullets, you know, as we go. If in 25 minutes there was a human still alive, the humans all win. If if that's if within twenty five minutes if everybody turns zombie the zombies obviously win. Fun game and it's that done live. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it was it was neat having like this building with like four floors so we could go anywhere in this building and and it was dark there were no lights on oh, not allowed it was so <laughs> scary. <laughs> that sounds good. So. I know. I digress. Anyway, shall we shall we do a rundown of what we're going to talk about today? <laughs> Beyond <Sure>. that, <laughs> so we have we have uh, Captain Marvel, Wonder Park, five feet apart. Um, I know we'll have box office numbers in there. Some streaming. I do have another challenge next week's openings, future films, and um, we'll have a new discussion question, which we'll probably just make up on the fly. <laughs> Because that's what we do. But hey, um, first, let's get into some news, shall we? Let's. Yes, any objections? Okay, first thing, um, and this is like really kind of huge news. James Gunn is back on the Guardians 3 project. That's 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 good, right? That's I mean, excellent. That's excellent. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious how much that's <laughs> costing Disney. <laughs> that was uh, that was absolutely perfect that's that's good right (laughs) well i mean he is he's like the father of guardians of the galaxy and and he i mean he made that that whole what what would you call that just like that whole franchise yeah it's his vision that's right it's his vision his franchise and and i and nobody else really wanted to take that role on because it was it's James Gun- James Guns James Guns. There we go. Anyway, you got it. Yeah. So it's his, which uh, is fascinating. So I, I'm just curious how much it cost them. Like like Disney fires him and then says, oh, "Never mind. Can you come back?" <laughs> so fascinating. Um. All right, so that's that news, and I'm sure everyone in the world knows it already, but it's still fun, it's still interesting. Here's another cool one. So, Pops, are you familiar with this this brand of, I guess, creature or doll or what have you? Do you guys know the... Are you, no. are you talking about Fungo Pops? Yes, Fungo Pops. Fungo yes. Pops. Um, oh, they're, Funko? Yeah, they're introducing a new one. And it's Goose, the cat from. Oh boy! Yeah, from from. Uh, <laughs> you know that Captain Fun, Marvel Funko Pops uh, has a pretty heavy stake in the San Diego market, right? Yeah, I think and, I know. Uh, they have yeah. a uh, they have a, a a place downtown by Petco Park. I wasn't sure if it's at their main main headquarters. No. Or? It isn't. Okay. I believe their main headquarters is 
Portland or up by Seattle, one of those two. But they always have a pretty large setup at San Diego Comic-Con for sure. And I I went to law school right around the corner from there where they put their storefront, and they were putting it up while I was in school, and it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm not – I personally (laughs) – not really a fan of those things, and it's okay. Yeah, I, th- I think that it's uh, it, it definitely is a uh, a taste thing, and uh, yeah, I think they're I, I think they're interesting, but I'm not going out and um, spending any money I don't have to buy them. Yeah, so. I have one. It's Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> oh, can you see my surprise face? Yes, look at that surprise. <laughs> Your eyes have just gotten so wide. In fact, they're as wide as a Funko Pop doll. A goose. A goose, yes. And there are two of them. One is, well, I, I shouldn't say. I, one so wait is, till we talk about the movie, maybe. Maybe when we talk about yeah. the movie. Uh, let's just, Unless you're not trying to do spoilers, I don't know. Well, no, we're actually going to talk about spoilers Um okay. At a later show. Okay. A so, later not show. Particular. Yeah, um, episode 56, we're going to do uh, some spoiler for that. Um, not this particular show. So once we, um, in the words of uh, Sammy Hagar, we can't drive 55, we'll do 56. Yes. Bingo. Right. Bingo. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I'll have to come back for that show because I wanted to talk... A little spoilers about it, but that's okay. Oh, do you? Well, we could yeah, probably well, throw in a, a... I guess we'll have to accommodate you. A Just Joe spoiler at the end of the credits. We could do something like that. <laughs> Maybe. Or you could just come back for another show. That's yeah, true. That. I love this idea. Okay. Well, and then the other I, the other news thing is uh, Just Joe explains the Crackhead Blues name origin. Okay. So there was a there was an attempt by someone on the show. I won't name them, DJ, but they <laughs> decided that they were going to take a crack at deciphering Crackhead Blue's explanation, and I don't think it came across all that well. So I have been asked by Crackhead Blue to try to set it straight a little bit. I won't take too long. All right. But those of you that are possibly familiar with the Howard Stern show, there was a recurring member of the show named Crackhead Bob. I remember they, him. They met Crackhead Bob at a book signing. He was a fan. And then he eventually became one of the founding members of what they call the Whack Pack. And that's a bunch of these offbeat characters that they have that are featured on the show and they do, you know, skits and they call in a bunch and whatever. So since Crackhead Bob was kind of the original Whack Packer and one of the most well-known um, goofy characters that the Stern Show had, Crackhead Blue decided, hey, that's perfect since I'm kind of the very first, you know, wacky fan that is a good fan of the show. And so she is, thanks for watching, Crackhead Bob. Uh-huh. He has blue hair, Crackhead Blue. There, That's uh-huh. the best I can probably explain it without going way deep. That makes sense. Oh, got it. See, how did we miss that? So there you have it. There you have it. That's And you did that in like under Yeah, you were well within time limits there. <laughs> right. Thank thank you, counselor. Yeah. You were way <laughs> under the statute of limitations on that one. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. So our our wacky crackhead blue is is uh, one of our number one fans. There we go. There it is. Our own whack pack. Yeah, got it. <laughs> whack pack. The whack pack is Crackhead Blue, Just Joe, and Teacher Strauss, right? And Teacher Abby. James Strauss. There. Oh, and Abby. Oh yeah. Don't oh, yeah. forget Abby. Can't forget Abby. That's and right. instead of maybe whack pack, maybe the watch pack for thanks for watching. I don't know, Ooh. something like that. I, I think we should call you guys the watch box. The watch box. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> or the, the watch, watch case. Box. Hmm. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. We'll have to think about this for for a bit. Not during the show, but like 
I'll have to think about that. What would we call You're our part fans? of viewers row? Yeah. My boob tubers come into mind, but it's probably not. <laughs> oh, DJ. <laughs> Sorry. You're masterful at taking completely <laughs> harmless, innocent things and turning them into... Well, what do we have on the agenda? <laughs> what do we have on the agenda? Well, hey, you know what? You know how I give send out this huge list of, of ways to contact us? You know, yeah. I think I, I don't think we need to do that whole list because everybody knows how to contact us. I think just... You know, go to our website, tfwmovies.com, and that's where you're going to find all that stuff. Right. Right? right? It's simple. Um, simple. Totally simple. And then you know we're on Instagram because we post mostly on Instagram. <laughs> like, that's our biggest thing right there. Um, but uh, with, with the Facebook and every once in a while the Google+, Plus, right? <laughs> Google+. Plus. <laughs> Google+. Plus. Just because um, we don't want you to die in in obscurity like MySpace. Right, exactly. We need Google Plus <laughs> to stick around. <laughs> Napster and, and MySpace don't have room. Ooh, Napster. Yeah, they're gone now. Tear. Um, but what's also there is our Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash TFW movies. Um, we post stuff there as well, including um, shooting this week, a midweek review, which everybody will get to hear it or like see. A, uh, it sounds like a uh, Shakespeare play. Right. A midweek's review. Yeah. It, yeah. It sounds very sophisticated. A Midsummer Night's Dream midweek review. No. Go. No, it's not that. It's going to be. Uh, oh, now I'm blanking on her name. Darn it. Child detective girl. What's her name? <sighs> uh, yeah. Blanking. Why is it has Why does this always happen to me? Nancy Drew. It's, Nancy Drew. That's it. Nancy hmm. Drew. I had to pull that one out. Well, no. I think uh, Crackhead Blue just uh, put that in. It scrolled across my screen. She did. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Sorry. I don't really pay attention to the, the, the chat, but look at that. It just popped right up there, which is nice. Now, uh, anyhow, so yeah, Nancy Drew. That's going to be uh, the the midweek review. Nancy Drew. Yes. Mm. Nice. So nice yeah, I saw that this weekend. Nifty, nifty film. Um. Uh, so you can see a lot of our stuff on YouTube. Just so you know, we're on the YouTube. But hey, let's talk about dreams, shall we? Because we all have them, right? Let's do it. Yeah. Do you? Do you dream in color? You know, I I don't know. Huh. Truthfully, I don't. Probably, right? I, I, you I know do. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't. I, all I know <laughs> is I wake up and I remember, like, the worst parts of the whole deal. And I don't know why. Why, why oh. can't I just remember good stuff? So. Yeah, that's, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. You know, I also, uh, I also dream, like, while I'm kind of awake. Like, I think the other day I screamed in my sleep. <laughs> and, like, the dude and Penny... on, like the dude on uh, Mr. Deeds? Yes. It, much like that. <laughs> and, and apparently I was running, too. And Penny, like, says, what? What's going on? You're screaming. And I was like, I was running toward a dog. And I don't know what that really means because I don't remember saying that. But she says that I said that. He made that up to make you feel like a dope. Uh, maybe. I love it. <laughs> maybe. But uh, nobody else said they heard me scream. So I guess, you know. But um, Was that during the week? Like, yeah, I think so. I think it was like a Tuesday. Like on a DJ nap day? No, I wasn't sleeping. I mean, I wasn't napping. It was it was a actual dream, like, or no, actual evening. Like, I think it happened at like 2 in the morning or something. Oh, so like more than an evening. 
like, yeah, like normal people time exactly to sleep exactly. Do you not sleep very often? No, I sleep as much as I can. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I try to take naps. I, although you know, I didn't sleep much last night, and I'll talk a little bit about that when that when we go get into stuff we're putting in our eyes. Um, but uh, so now I have this tinnitus thing that's going crazy. So I found out that if if you haven't slept enough, it gets louder, and I had no idea. But now huh? it's loud. I get it. See <laughs> what'd you say? What'd you say? <laughs> what, huh? No, you guys, you guys have higher tones in your voices, so I hear you better. I'm pretty sure I have slight tinnitus from many years of playing music, and ditto. I hear it uh, only in quiet rooms. Yeah, like, like when I'm in the car right before I get out, yep. I hear it there. Uh, maybe right before I fall asleep, but yeah, it's not bad. It's yeah, not. apparently it's it's based uh, because you have hearing loss. If you had hearing right. loss, you hear that. It's crazy. Right. Anyway, good news. Yeah, <laughs> good news. Anyway, films about dreaming. Let's go there, shall we? <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Wow, I know it's right. Um, but Crackhead Blue, she has our first list of of films. Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Uh, that's a great one, by the way. Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm like, yes. the original or all of them? I'm not quite The answer sure. is yes. The answer is yes. Okay. I but love most that. Most likely answer. she's talking about the original. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, getting it a, a little advanced, I, it's on my list, and the original is this also. The, yeah, she just confirmed the original. Ah, uh, sweet. Okay, The Exorcist, definitely not on my list, but I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Fly, I can't believe I didn't even think of that one. That's a great one. That's a great one. Uh, <clears throat> Dumbo. Aww. The Drunk Dream? Uh that would work for me. Yeah. That would work definitely. for me. Yep. Um, and then honorables. Just some honorables. American Werewolf in London. I love that film. I didn't even think about the dreams that were in there. Yeah, some of those dream sequences are pretty pretty intense. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. about that one. I it, Good choice, I, Blue. We've talked about American Werewolf in London at least one other time in the on the show. And I think I said, oh, I really want to see that again. But you know what? I haven't seen it yet. I really need to we see it. We make this. a point of watching it every Halloween. Really? Do you yeah. guys own we, a copy of this? Yes. Ooh. Is it a digital copy or is it a... Uh... I believe it is hard media. Wow. Hard media. I'm wondering if, if I could talk somebody into uh, let me borrow it. Wink, wink. I'm sure you could. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, okay, cool. All okay. right. Well, then, uh, and I'll I'll watch it, like, before Halloween, like, sometime soon, so that way... Because I don't know if Penny's seen it. And there's a lot of films that she hasn't seen. I watched that movie at a pretty young age, because it was one of my mother's favorites. And she sat, you know, she sat me down and... You want, I want you to watch this movie. It's really great. And so it's one that sticks with me from my childhood. And there's one dream sequence in that movie that really scared me as a child. And it still has like a very... I get a pretty good response out of it when I see it. Because it just reminds me of how scary it used to be. I can't wait to see this. I, got, yeah. I can't wait to show Penny. I, she's probably not seen it. I would bet. What do you think, Jimmy? Do you think Penny's not seen it? Which movie now? Sorry. Amer American Werewolf in London. Um, I'm willing to bet. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think your wife has seen it, I bet. My wife has not seen lots of movies, and if she has, she does not remember them. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, let's not obsess over American Werewolf in London. Let's move on to Rosemary's Baby. Ooh, that's a good one. A creepy movie. Uh, yes, and um, <laughs> yes, it is. And Mickey's A Christmas Carol. That's a good one. Okay, I yeah. know Penny's seen that one. 
Is that a thing? It is a thing. I'm teasing you. Good lord. Oh my. Yes. Don't oh my get gosh. All been out of shape. All right. Man. All right. I'm all good. I'm good. I'm good. Um. Well, and then okay. So thank you, Crackhead Blue. That's a great list. That's a really. I mean, except for the Exorcist, that kind of scares me a little. Um. <laughs> but other than that, right? It, it's not that bad. It. It's not. I mean, I've seen it, so it it can't be that bad. I mean, I I guess I'd have to say Poltergeist is worse, but it's not a dream movie. We're not talking about it. Never mind. Moving on. Um, just Joe, do you want to throw down your list? Sure, sure. I will throw my list down. Yeah, I know. It is being right, so, thrown. Yeah, I'm about to throw it, so watch out. Okay, I'm ducking. All right. So I've got Inception. Oh, good yes, one. Which the whole movie. movie is a dream, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Waking Life, which not many people have seen, actually. That The more I talk about that movie with friends, uh, I find out that a lot of people haven't seen it. Can movie. I say I have not seen it? Yeah, you can say that. Okay, I haven't seen it. I think you just did, actually. So oh, yeah. There, there you go. On. Yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. Yes. Um, but I like some of the ones that came later. Yeah. I just I make, get them mixed up, which one's which. So I just did the all-encompassing franchise name. or franchise name. Yeah, I do, this, I do the same thing with Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sorry, it's only funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're right. It is only funny <laughs> to you. I won't, I won't argue with you on that. Oh, good. Um, Wizard of Oz. Ooh, yes. Good one. Because she wakes up at the end, right? Totally. Says it was a whole... Oh, yeah. yeah okay. It was all dream. Which, yeah. And uh, Total Recall. And she dreams in color as well. <laughs> yep, she did. <laughs> And then, yeah, Total Recall rounds the list out. And I thought of an honorable mention while we were talking about something else. Scrooge. Ooh. Gosh, I love Scrooge. That's Scrooge Bill Murray. Did, with a, Yeah, Bill Murray. Yeah, he's a good guy. I really like great him. Great movie. And that's it. And that's it. All right. Thank you. What a great list. Thanks. I love that. Um, Lucas from the 29 Toes podcast, he says... Uh, Mirror Mask. I don't think I've seen that. I I have not seen it either, but in reading the synopsis, it does take place in a dream. So, yeah. And I think, um, does, does, uh, Crackhead Blue, I think she said something. Does that mean she... So, she said she, yeah, uh, Neil Gaiman, so I'm assuming it's written by him. Okay, so she knows this film, or mm -hmm. book. Or knows of it. Or of yeah. it. Cool. Yay. Yeah, somebody uh, commented on my Facebook. Uh, my One of my cousins, like, oh, my gosh, I thought I was the only one that seen that film. So, yay, way to go, Tara. So, uh, cousin Tara. But anyway, that's cool. Thank you, Lucas. 29 Toes Podcast. Um, and then here we are with uh, Teacher J.M. Strauss. Are you all ready for this? Hold on. Nice. Let me turn Did off my alarm. Really nice. Oh, no. You are oh. that dude today. Well, actually, that alarm is just to make sure you're still recording. <laughs> are you still recording? <laughs> oh, I was supposed to be recording? Ah, oh, crud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an edit. Uh-oh. Yeah. Did you miss... I'm, I'm um, recording. Yay. You you big Did you miss another 29 Toes podcast member? Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Looks like you skipped somebody. Uh, No, no. There's two, but one didn't make a show, so it, I gotcha. kept it blank. Okay. That's All from right. past shows, so... Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, boy, some... Edit that out. Yeah, we'll edit that out. or Just leave it in <laughs> for fun. Yeah, right. right? We'll see. So, teach your damn Strauss. <laughs> so why is it that we get off topic when we come to you? I don't understand. <laughs> oh, well. Here we go. Alice in Wonderland. Uh, good one. Um, and he, he puts animated. And, 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 hmm. Where'd that come from? Look at that. Animated. Not animated. Uh, and then click. Good one. I liked Click. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it, but when they, when it came on, it was good. And kind of, 
I don't know if it's kind of sad near the end. Is that the Adam Sandler movie? I think so. Yeah. I never saw it. Where he has the big fat flap. The remote control? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the fat flap movie. (laughs) Um, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. Hey, uh, I think she dreams in color in that film. Oh, wait. Already (laughs) been there. Thank you. Thank you for laughing. I really like that. Um, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. Um, and he put a question mark for Dumbo, but I do think that counts. And then Winnie the Pooh also has some dream sequence in there, which is really good. Especially in the ride. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The ride is creepy. And then he says, if, if you say you like mentions a dream, then he wanted to add Sleeping Beauty, Pinocchio, Cinderella, Princess and the Frog, Tangled, all these Disney films. Ah, uh, we know who's the Disney fan for sure. And then Inside Out, they mention dreams. I haven't seen Inside Out in forever. Dude, are you kidding me? It's been a while. I mean, I you the whole the whole freaking world falling apart. And and oh having, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, the, the not Disney guy. <laughs> Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I I go with that. That works for me. I like those. Those are great films. I know. Thanks for the reminder, though. I mean, I need something like that. A little kick in the pants. Come on, DJ. Figure little it out. Little one. A little one. Little one. <laughs> little one. I don't need a big kick in the pants. It's not like you're taking me to the moon. But anyway. <laughs> Cool. All right. Those are our fans. Our fans are are speaking to us and telling us what their favorite films about dreaming. Good one. I like these. Are good ones. All right. Are you ready for mine? Let's hear it. All right. Here it goes. All right. UHF. Of course, that's my number one. And by the way, a lot of that film are his dream sequences. So... Just Joe, have you seen I, it? I I feel like you're going to figure out how to put UHF in every one of your lists. It is kind of <laughs> kind of a uh, uh, plan <laughs> or a, a goal. I'm sure I've seen it once. Okay. But I don't remember a single detail. Oh, my gosh, because you haven't seen it in such a long time. Probably, yeah. You know, we could do a movie loan swap. Like, if you wanted to swap? W- watch right. UHF and I'd get American Werewolf in London. You know? Sounds good. That sounds All like right. fun. Um, what Dreams May Come is another one of mine. Robin Williams. Oh. Yeah, okay. Inception. I like good that one. one. Um, yeah. Shutter Island. That's another one with uh, Leo. Leo, yeah. And it seems very dreamy. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street is another one. Um, Wizard of Oz. If if you could believe, I really did like Flatliners, the original when it came out like a long time ago. Um, and then uh, Total Recall. And that's that's the end of my list. We, we just Joe, we you and I similar list. Ended yeah, this. I think you were looking over my shoulder when I was writing my. list. I must have all the time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but not in a creepy way, honestly. Mm, says know. you. And well, and on your list, recall is spelled correctly. That's also true. <laughs> not Raquel. <laughs> Stop looking at my list. I will hide my list from now on. It's going to be in black. You can't see it. <laughs> um, okay, Jimmy, do you have anything for us? I do. Three. All right. Three. Adrift. <gasps> that had a lot of dreamy sequences in it. The whole thing was about it. The whole thing was like the out at sea was a dream. The guy yeah. died. That was amazing. That yeah, that was a good that's a good one. And then to go along with that out at sea thing, Life of Pi. Yeah. Yep, that'll do it. And then uh, a Jim Carrey movie, Vanilla Sky. Jim Carrey was in. Oh no 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 no! That's Tom, Tom Cruise. Cruise. Okay, sorry. I was like, Tom, I sorry. My bad. My bad. Cool. All right. All right. My bad. Forgiveness, Tom? please. 
<laughs> well, it worked out. You can yell at me. Do your thing. <laughs> what? What? No, there's no yelling. Get your Vanilla crap Sky. together. Come on, man. You didn't even spell sky right. Oh, wait, you did. <laughs> I can't help it. Uh, well, those are some great films. I think everybody uh, give yourselves a pat on the back because y'all did a great job. Good job, uh, everyone. Line up. That's right. Yes, line up. Uh, so cool. All right, thank you. All right, now let's get into stuff we're putting in our eyes, shall we? Um, and I'll go. I'll be quick about this because I know I know we really want to talk a little bit about uh. Captain Marvel, but first of all, um, five feet apart. Now, an interesting story. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but we tried to watch this one three times, and the third time was a charm. We got to see it the third time. The first time, we so every time we went with our father-in-law, who who's deaf, and the captions weren't working. So the first time we left after like 20 minutes, this, but we left with free movie tickets, which is cool. Um, then we went back again last night to go see it at 7.30. And again, the captions were not working. So uh, I was sat there with the manager trying to figure it out going, okay, buddy, I'm not leaving here until you figure this out because I want to see this film. And if you don't have captions, I can't Someone's see it. Someone's going to get beat. Exactly. So, uh, this time I said, okay, well, this is playing in another theater because I want to see it, and you're obviously this theater isn't working. And he says, yep, we're showing it down in theater three instead of theater eight. And I'm like, all right, well, uh, theater three starts at 9.15. So, two-hour movie, plus trailers, we were done at about 11.30 last night. Exhausted. But... Uh, this was a great film, even at, whatever, 10, 11 o'clock at night. Really nifty. So, Five Feet Apart, this is your typical love story between a terminal boy and girl trying to kill, e trying not to kill each other. There you go. But hey, it stars some folks that you might know from the Disney Channel. Did you ever watch Hannah Montana? No. No. What? You didn't watch Hannah Montana? No. Oh. No. All right. Well, there was, in this, in Hannah Montana, there's a little annoying boy uh, played by uh, Moises uh, Aris. Anyway. It's too hard nose on that. Yeah. Jeez. All right. Um, how about, did you ever watch uh, Sweet Life of Zach and Cody? No. No. And no. Oh. And no. Oh, my gosh. The, the twins, you know. The Zach and Cody twins. Anyway, never mind. So, the sister, the, sister, what? Nothing. Go ahead. Oh, all right. So, the, so Zach and Cody are twins. Cody, played by Cole Sprouse, he was in this film, and um, just watching this film makes you feel like you're old because <laughs> they were little kids when you were watching that. If well, for those of you listening that have watched this and are now older. And know that they're older. Never mind. I'm not even gonna go there. But I couldn't follow you on that. Thanks. One. Yeah. So my you big point my here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> my big point here is it's a it's a fun little story about these people with CF cystic fibro fibrosis. Uh, who meet each other in the hospital, and these are all the people that they know, and sort of the the love story and drama behind that. Like, if they're swapping spit, they're really just swapping their germs. Not so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't want to trade their germs because th that'll kill them. So. Uh, but overall, <laughs> you know... I'm just saying, this was a great film. I think you really should see it. I know. I'm sorry. But Hannah Montana <laughs> was a fun TV show. I have to say, I watched it. I know. 
<laughs> Why is it that I hear crickets more in this show? Wait, is that the title of this show? I hear crickets. Yeah, there That's it is. Cool. Yep, there it is, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was listening boy. for them that time. Right, me too, actually. <laughs> I bet I have a, a, a soundbite I could throw in there later. <laughs> but uh, Definitely. We could we could put a soundboard together for you and definitely play sounds on the fly. Uh, that, would great. that would be awesome. I would love that. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, but, but still, it's a cute love story. Uh, there's, if you, if you like that type of thing, you're going to cry. You're definitely going to cry. It's going to... It's gonna make you like tear up. I'm not Bring some tissue. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not very good at crying. No. Okay. At least well, I'm gonna tell you that. Right. Well, and you know, I learned about cystic fibrosis. So I, I didn't learn how to say it, but CF, I did learn about. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Cystic fibrosio. Thank you. I think that's what you just said. That's, yeah, probably. I don't even know what I said. I thought what? you were going to be like a speech pathologist or something. Yeah, but that you know that went away when I failed the first five classes. Um, but I learned a lot about this uh, this, this this terminal disease, and the it, this film was kind of a true story. It was about this one person and all the names were changed to protect the innocent, of course. And, uh, it, there was, it was really more for this person and not for anybody else. So all the other characters were really fictitious. Like they weren't, they weren't really part of this person's life. So it was kind of, I don't know what do you call that? If it's like fake, but it's real. Fake news. Based on true events, not, so there's there's when you watch a biopic or a, a true telling, there's three ways they'll package it. They'll say this is a true story. Yeah. They'll say these are based on true events. Yeah. And then I forgot the third one, but that's basically how they get around. Based on the fantasy of somebody. Right. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So so the gal was real, but but then that was it. Nothing else was real. With, and and I think because, I mean, if you look at the story, like if you do some background digging and such, she didn't want anybody else's name or anybody else's likeness or anything to be part of it. But but they did want the message of what CF really was. And uh, Oh, I remember, the, I remember the third one. Oh, what was the third one? This is some really, really real shit, something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, so this one is not really real definitely not so but anyway that's cool uh good film i you know what i give this a uh a nine out of ten and that's because there was you could tell some of the acting was kind of off a little bit a little bit but you'll you, you have to see it for yourself but the story's awesome the crying will happen and uh it's a fun show and if you like skateboarding, there's skateboarding in it. I don't know. Saving Grace? Yeah. I have I have um, loved skateboarding my whole life. Oh, see? There you go. There's skateboarding in it. You'll love it. Yeah. It's all in a hospital room. So it's not really much of anything else. Well, that's even better. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. That way, if you fall and get hurt, you're already at the place you need to be. That was going to die. That so was... what the hell? You may as well. Right. That was the point. What better place to break your arm? You're already there. Right. Um, you're already there. That was cool. See, you pretty much predicted the end of that film. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not predictable <laughs> at all. No, I don't need to see it. No. Got oh. it. Does. No, you do need to see it. Put that in your eyes. It's really good. <laughs> um, nine out of ten. Come on, that's a great. That's a great rating. DJ. But that's the DJ. That's the DJ scale. <laughs> wait, wait you gotta, what is the DJ scale? There's like, there's like, there's like a handicap, and then there's <laughs> like. Uh, Deductions and slight, you know. Oh, your, your scale doesn't even slide, DJ. Your scale's stuck at like nine. Stuck at nine. I, yeah, it's so nine, there. and sometimes it like it like pushes over to Goes, ten. I gave a show a six last week, or the last show, episode fifty-four. 
Uh, see, it slides. Was I on that show? I, did it slide or did it just fall upside down in the nine or the six? <laughs> upside down nine. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was really a, a right side up six. You're like, oh, is this a this is a six? No, that's a nine, no. right? No, I don't know. It's, it's upside down. I can't tell. Uh, oh dear. Well, you kind of stepped into all that. You, I guess I did. Uh, my reputation. Oh my goodness. It precedes you for sure. Ah, oh, wow. Okay. Well, I, God, let's move on to another film, shall we? Sure. Sure. Okay. Let's talk a little a, sa- a smidge about Wonder Park. All right. It's it's an animated film, and it's your typical love story about a girl and her magical teddy bear that's actually a monkey. And uh, her mom. Hmm. Yes. So what happens is this girl and this mom create this magical park, theme park, and they call it Wonderland. Go figure why the title isn't called Wonderland, but everywhere in the movie it's called Wonderland. So Wonderland is created by this monkey who is magical, who hears the voice of this girl who says all these fancy little uh, attractions or rides, what have you, in, uh, whispers them into the ear of her stuffed monkey, and that monkey can hear it, and they create everything that she says. So while mom and her are creating this huge theme park... Uh, mom gets sick and mom has to go away for a while, for a long while. And so the girl gets sad and depressed and, and feels dark and why get, I, because her mom is sick and I don't know, <laughs> I'm mom's not there anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. So then these like little monkey zombies come in and destroy the, the park that they've magically created. Because of the darkness that she created, that she feels. It's the darkness. The darkness is coming. Hey, what movie do we know like that? What is that movie? Uh, the Never Ending Story. The nothing, the yeah. nothing is coming. You're right. Not the, the nothing. Darkness. You're right. Uh, anyway, moving back to this. Um, so Close enough. The girl decides she, she's going off to camp while mom is in this the hospital and the girl's like oh my gosh i can't leave dad alone he's gonna hurt himself and she visualizes him having you know getting electrocuted and all this other horrible stuff and just eating pizza only um and dying Sounds like a hell of a deal right i love this idea as well so she decides to sneak away from the camp uh and go back home but in doing so she stumbles upon Wonderland, and then she has to help save Wonderland and keep them from uh, the demise of... Is this like like, the Michael Jackson Wonderland thing? No, no, not even close. Not even close. But it's it's a cute little warm, you know, happy movie. Um, Eventually. Eventually. So, but, uh, yeah, Wonder Park. That doesn't sound very warm. It's it's fun. Okay. It's good for the kids. The kids will enjoy it. Uh, you know, the little monkey zombies are are cute and adorable and and you I mean they carry axes, but sometimes they miss. And <laughs> but overall, hey, you know the animation is good. The the meaning behind everything is you know, you just try and you will overcome your woes. Something like that. Okay. Keep trying. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. What do we do? Oh, nobody finished that. We swim. <laughs> All right. Uh, Crickets. Stop, eh? Crickets. Uh, seven out of ten. Seven out of ten, y'all. Uh, seven. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Well, well I mean. Just fight, you're fighting back now. I love it. That's I it. I think that was on. Yeah, that's, that was out of spite. Arr. So, but yeah, no, it was, it, it was cute. I mean, I think it could have been a lot better. Um, distributed by Paramount, but you, you would have thought that it was sort of a Disney film. But they called it Disney Park. I mean, Wonder Park instead of Wonderland. 
I wonder if Disney had something to do with that. Just a thought. So, but anyway. Probably, yeah. Enough about that. Let's move on to another movie I'm sure everybody wants to talk about. Yeah. Captain Marvel. Okay. Let's talk, let's talk about it. Let's talk about that. So this is your classic love story between a woman and her <laughs> electric shocking fingertips and glowing hair. Okay, really, it's about a test pilot badass hero <laughs> who's uh, going against the um, scrolls, the alien, the evil aliens, right? Or so we sure. think. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's the way um, it's framed. That, right? Exactly. So tell me, what did you think about this film? Like, well, as an example, like when I saw it, for the first time, I was, I had such emotion. Like, I can't even, I'm choking up on it right now. It's just like, this is so amazing. I really enjoyed this film. What was your first reaction? Me or Jimmy? Okay. Ciao. Uh, first reaction was, honestly, I didn't want another Marvel film in between the two Avengers films. I wanted it to go cold. I wanted everybody to freak out yeah. from what they saw at the end of Infinity War. And not have any answers, but they left us with that stinger for Captain Marvel. So, of course, everyone's excited. Um, I liked the movie. I would rate it in the middle of the pack, maybe even the lower middle of the pack when it's compared to the other Marvel movies. Um, I felt like they were trying to do too much. And without going into spoilers, there's some things that I didn't like the direction of. Ooh. If we're going to talk about spoilers, I can elaborate on that a little more. But if you want to wait for Here, another no. episode... We no, let's, here's the thing. If, if Do it. For the next like five minutes or so, if we're not talking about... Uh, scroll ahead if you if you, if you don't want to hear the spoiler. Yeah, scroll ahead, because yeah. that's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Okay, so my entire comic book reading life, the scrolls are evil bar none, hands down. There's no, oh, we're just trying to find a place to live and live our lives. No, they've always been the big bad. So that twist was a little odd. I don't really get it, but I kind of get it because, like, I don't know. They, and then the Marvel thing was a little off as well. Um, the way she got her powers is not because she shot a nuclear reactor in a plane, but... Uh, essentially the tesseract powered engine but uh she actually fused with marvel to become captain marvel oh. so there's a little bit of things that they took some creative you know liberties with that i was like okay i get it but i don't like it but overall it was a fun watch um, would you watch it again and pay probably not and that you know, my question is at this point is, is it? <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Are you so, choking up again? I am. I am. <clears throat> Let me. Okay, I get. I got this. So here, here's my question now. Uh, is it possible that she did merge with Marvel? It's very possible, but the way they have you believe the way she got her powers was absorbing the energy yeah. from that from that cell. And the, the, that's what they want us to believe, but that's only a memory that she has, which is sort of skewed already. Uh, but we saw it a bunch of different times from a bunch of different explanations. Like Marvel explained it, her memory, we saw it where Jude Law's character was there yeah. and saw how it went down. So I think that was reality. I think so. However... It wasn't how she, Captain Marvel originally gets her powers. Right. But, again, I, I liked it. I would just put it in the middle middle of the pack or lower middle of the pack. And that has nothing to do with it, you know, the, all the controversy surrounding it. Because that didn't even influence my decision to go see it or not go see it at all. Yeah. I, I'm loyal to the Marvel brand. I want to see everything that they're coming out with. And, like... I'll even get depressed sometimes and be like, you know, there's going to be a day where I won't be able to go see these movies anymore and they're going to keep making them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Um, now, but so, but emotionally, how did you feel about that? Like, what did, like, when you saw Captain Marvel or, or, or 
Carol Danvers being like pushed down and saying, "No, you're too emotional and too this." Did you did you like were you kind of like, "What the hell? Stop it!" And then when she stood up to that that oppression, nah, no, because I think that's a vi- it's a very typical thing with hero movies, like the like. You know, look at even Captain America. It's he the was overcoming small, bullied. Thing. Right. Yeah. He was pushed around. Oh, you'll never make it as a soldier, blah, blah, blah. And then he makes it, and he's, an, and he's a super soldier. So I didn't really get emotional with that, but it was a good driving force for her to, like, wait a minute. I've had handcuffs on this whole time. You know, I'm way better than they're letting me believe I am. So yeah. That was cool. That was cool when she realized her full potential and then just became the most OP hero we've seen yeah so that's good that was kind of true to comics and uh it'll be interesting to see how she goes up against thanos coming up here in a month or so yeah i'm looking forward to that i uh, the one thing that is interesting is we never saw and i've probably said this to to a bunch of other people but like we never saw her like actually train with her powers so we don't I don't even think she realizes the full potential of what she can do. Well, you could see that when she kind of like was unlocked as she was shooting her hands and everything like that. It was catching her off guard. Yeah. On like some of the uses that she was doing, like it was stumbling her back or or she looked at it like, whoa, I didn't know I could do that. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I think by the time we catch up with her in Endgame, she'll be fully realized because, you know, it's it's 20 years later. Right. And she's been off doing whatever she's been doing. Yeah, and I, I, so. to me, I feel like that's that's one that's a miss for Marvel. I mean, that's I like seeing them learn their powers and figure out how how to get better. Yeah, I feel like this was a rushed origin movie. Like our other origin movies have been way better as far as a lot of more explaining and. And and we kind of grow with the character, right? This way, yeah. this one, she's already kind of fully realized, just not sure who she is. So it's a different origin story, right? So I think that will f- a lot of people who aren't familiar with the character s- probably still aren't familiar with the character. Yeah, but and you know the one thing I knew, like she was with the Cree, and they were bad. Like as far as I knew, they were bad. Well, yeah, why are you so yeah. bad. I, yeah. <laughs> well, and then, and especially in in uh, the what is it, Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Like they were trying to, they were just trying to be bad. They weren't good. In fact, the ships were the biggest giveaway right there. Right. Well, we see we see Ronan from from Guardians in it. So yeah, yeah, that's right. We do see Ronan. So anyway. So I didn't. I thought that was weird that she'd be on the same side as them. That did make sense to me. Well, she was, you know, from just like Anakin says, from the Jedi evil from his point of view. So, right. you know, from everybody's point of view, the other person's the bad of guy. Of course, of course. Uh, and I'm glad that she saw it differently. But see, I didn't know those those guys were the other. The scroll were bad too. I didn't. I, yeah, the, throughout every pretty much every Marvel character arc. Anytime they show up, they are the bad. They're the big bad. Right. They're the orcs. Right. Hmm. Right? The shapeshifters. Essentially, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's... Huh. Uh, I I don't know as much about um, about Captain Marvel. Not I'm not really a comic book guy. Um, but... I enjoyed it, but I did. I there was some things that I was like, seriously, good lord, like the the piecing together the the dream, like the first, like after the second time, you knew what was going to happen. It was like, oh, do we have to go back and see that crap again? Really? <laughs> you you just took twenty minutes of my life. I'll never get back. So maybe it's just me. Yeah, I didn't feel that way. I did, obviously, because oh. I said that. Yeah, <laughs> you did say that <laughs> out loud. Yes. Yeah. All right. So what do we what do we uh, rate this? Uh, I'd give it a seven. Seven. 
Maybe six. Six and a half. Let's give it six we, and a half. We don't do halves. All right, then six. We do. Oh, that's a seven. Six and a half goes to seven. All right. All right, all right. We'll do, all right, we'll, I'll stick with Okay, seven. cool. Uh, Jimmy. See, I think uh, seven was the number that was in my head because the cinematic value was really good. Um, yeah, it was a fun watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would watch it again. I would pay money to watch. Well, I would pay my $20 a month that I already pay. <laughs> To watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But, uh, 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 the reason, actually, I would watch them again is because I feel like I missed certain things. And, and, and I have to go back and research why did why was this and what how does it tie together. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm a cheater. Yeah. I've seen it twice. I want to see it again. I can't wait to see it again. I give it a 10. I, I've got it a ten out of ten. I just I loved. Can you, you know, say ten? I did. Ten. I did, I did say a ten. Um, <laughs> it. I. You know what though? I just love the message behind it. Beyond, beyond the 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 oppression of like any superhero, like um, like Captain America, but he's still a guy. You know, I can't I can't relate to what you know all women have gone through in their lives you know barely getting a chance to vote and and do all that i thought it was a really great f you to all the guys who like to say women can't do stuff i i i thought it was great i thought it was uh one of those kind of uh, uh films i got you. yeah so and it just made me happy so to me that was a 10 that was like and so I, I guess I didn't know a lot of the other stuff that goes on in the superhero world, but uh, that that's the one thing I liked. And if I can add, a lot of the criticism about her acting and how like how she acted in the movies, like I don't think any of that was warranted. I no. thought she was great. Yeah. I thought the I thought she was like just enough little attitude which made it believable not over the top not too shy yeah like you know like a real person you you we all have that person in our life that's kind of snarky and fun and she seemed like she was she embodied that so i don't i don't see the criticism as far as the acting goes i thought it was awesome yeah as far as as far as the characters went when we knew what was going on it's just i felt like they tried to do a little bit too much and explain too many things at once and they could lose potentially lose people there yeah but it was nice to see right before uh, um the avengers i'm glad they did because i was dying to see something um sure. and i know you're like uh, couldn't we just have it dark still <laughs> yeah i think endgame would have had a bigger impact if we just had nothing from marvel yeah no hints of anything until endgame came out and that, i agree with that too because i think they could have they could have played that part that way where um introduce captain marvel here in endgame and then show her origin story afterwards sure like man where did she come yeah from? And then, yeah right. they could have done it that way too i like that um yeah okay cool well, i'm i hate to be a party pooper but i'm gonna party poop out because i'm super duper tired oh. and it's super duper late i know it's like almost uh 11 o'clock i know so Whoa. I will bid you adieu. All right, all right, Jimmy. Very good. I'll finish have uh, DJ. I'll finish the show. With sweet, you. sweet. We only have a little bit to go, anyhow. So um, yeah, I, I did want to talk a little bit about some stuff I streamed. And sweet. To that. Okay. So sweet. great having you on the show, Joe. You're great. Thanks, Jimmy. You're a great I'll, I'll, addition, I, yeah. uh, DJ. Thank you, man. Given You're tens. Welcome. Ten, ten, ten. Um, <laughs> tens, nines, and sometimes a six. Sometimes a six or an upside down nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Bye. Okay. So let's see. Where are we? Oh, yeah. So uh, it's time for a challenge. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. So last week's challenge uh, was Austin Powers. Or not last week. Blue got, but Blue literally got that not even in a second. As soon as she heard it, she was like, I know what that is. And she said She it. said it. She knew it. Um, it was so quick. It was so And quick. then um, sometime afterwards, uh, a, a teacher J.M. Strauss got it as well. So a couple okay. people got it, which is cool. I, yeah. yeah. I just want to 
mention how fast she did. Oh, yeah. Cool. That That's good. That was fast. Um, all right. Here's the next one. Ari Rete. Hit it. Hit it. It's Walter. There we go. That's all you get. Whoa. Uh, I didn't really hear it here. Yeah, it just it just uh, it just cut out a little bit here on Discord. So. All right. Well, then uh, you'll have to scroll over to um, one hour and six minutes on the show. Yep, I will check it <laughs> and out. check it out because it'll be on there pretty good. Um, probably held that too close to the microphone for you guys. Sorry. That's I'll right. remember that next time. Uh, or when I can get it put in directly, which will be really nice when we get that happening. So, um, but basically, there you go. Give it a shot. I know it's a bus- bunch of whistling, but maybe you'll get it. We'll see. All right, next up, streaming. Yeah. All right, you want to go first? Um. Yeah, so I think this might have been mentioned. I don't know if Blue mentioned it. Um. But we we watched the Dragon Prince. Did she talk about that already? Did you guys talk about that show? Uh, I don't recall. Not on the show. Okay. So she had watched it, and yeah, it's it's yeah, it's stream- so it's on Netflix. You, you know, we're doing the streaming portion now, so I can't talk about it. Okay, yes. so um, she had watched it. It's the same writer. And correct me if I'm wrong, Blue. Same writer as um, Avatar: The Last Airbender. So not the two guys that created it, but the, the the actual writer that wrote a lot of that. And she watched it once by herself uh, again a second time. I kind of hopped in on a few episodes, and she watched it a third time when I watched. To the both seasons. Oh, wow. So she watched it three full times. I watched it once. It's really, really good. If you like The Last Airbender, do yourself a favor and check out The Dragon Prince on Netflix. It's really great. It's It's got the same heart that Airbender had. And it's it's uh, 3D animated, so it looks a little, a look, it looks a little cleaner and, and smoother than traditional animation, but it's still... Not to take away from traditional animation, but it still looks great. Um, I really liked it. Like I, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, there's a couple characters in there. I've I tend to have the habit of gravitating towards the smaller side characters on shows like that, and there's a couple in this show that I just I was all about them. I I, I really took to them. So that's something we finished last week or a week and a half ago. Okay. Um, and then I also binged a show called Drive to Survive on Netflix, and that's about Formula One racing. Um, I think it was it was done really well. It was it was it told some different stories of different teams and drivers, and it really put like a human side to these guys that are going out there and driving these cars at 200 miles an hour every week. So, if you're into auto sports, motorsports, or whatever, I, I would recommend that one as well. Cool. Oh, that's right. Dragon Prince has a deaf character, and there's a lot of ASL. Really? That's animated. Oh. Yeah, it's great. Okay. It's great. Ooh. All right. We'll check that out. It's animated ASL. So yeah. AASL. So it's not. It's not perfect. <laughs> AASL. Right. Right. Yeah. There you go. Okay. It's not perfect, but it's it's there. But it's there. Okay. Yeah. The Dragon Prince. The Dragon. Hold Prince. On, I gotta write this down. The Dragon Prince. I got. I missed it. All right. I'll have to edit that silence that, out right there. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. And that's that's pretty much all I've been streaming. Oh, I'm. I think I want to check out Love, Death, and Robots. I've been recommended that show a couple times here now. Yeah, that's on my list uh, as well. It's. I put it in my. Uh, I it, literally my list. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a few people have told me to check that one out. Okay. Um, yeah, it looks like it's it's a little bit of animated, but a little bit of uh, regular. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. 
I'm interested. And somebody explained it to me that it's every show is a different story, so it's not a continuation. Kind of like Black Mirror was a different story every every episode. Oh, okay, is that is like Robot so. Chicken? Isn't that as well? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's a fair comparison since there's robot in the Okay, title, but... good. <laughs> I don't think they're the same at all. Got it. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll have to check that out. Um, we we uh, streamed by quite by accident a film called Exposed um, with Keanu Reeves. And I want to say I wasn't sure if I loved it or hated this film. It, you know, it had some really, m- some stuff missing in the film. Like we, there was like this long walk in a hallway and I thought this makes no sense. It's very pointless. But mm. then like, as the film kept going, there was a point and we kept going back to that. So really there's a woman in the, there's a woman in a subway and she sees these weird things and there's missing parts in this whole thing. And then there's this cop and he's trying to protect his partner but his partner's dead and they and it's they think it's the the woman but he's trying to say it's these gangs because of some rivalry going on and it's weird it's just a really weird film and i think i don't know if it's genius or obnoxious but it's i think they did a great job and that's probably why i'm liking this film it's called exposed and okay. it's on netflix exposed yeah right. and, and it's like i you want to go why are you doing this why are you why are you going after these other people when it, you really just need to talk to this one person and and maybe that's just the drama that they're setting up with it but ah uh, I, I don't know it's either genius or not and <laughs> and okay. i can't tell but but the missing scenes are explained later what's missing about it and it's interesting hmm. and there are ghosts and ghosts scare me <laughs> okay. so but anyway but that's all i have i'm still i'm still watching all the uh the the dc universe uh s- stuff supergirl right now um i think we finished arrow just recently so i'll talk a little bit about okay. that next time okay. so um but yeah well, and we'll, we'll move on from there all right so um let's see next week us oh yeah so i'm probably gonna go see that because well technically it's the only thing opening this week i think we're we have plans to go see that as well so maybe maybe i can come back next week and we can talk talk more talk about that or talk amongst us ourselves talk amongst (sighs) us about (laughs) us yes exactly cool (laughs) <laughs> All right. Um, oh, box office. Uh, Jimmy usually does that. Nope. <laughs> I'm guessing, just so you know, I think Captain Marvel hit number one again. That's my guess. But uh, If only we had this thing that we could look at. Yeah, up. I think I do. I just have to click the button wherever the button is. <laughs> And it's there. It is. So yeah, Captain Marvel is still number one for the weekend of March fifteenth. They're making some money. You want to get take a guess on number two? Number two, five feet apart. Oh, that's number three. Oh, okay, then number two. Uh, gosh. Uh, I can't guess. Wonder Park. No way. I didn't think it was yeah. good enough to be number two, but it is a number kids' two. film, and kids love that, and they need kids in the movie theaters. So yeah. makes sense. I get it. I totally yeah. get it. Um, do you, do you see how far apart Wonder Park and Mo- Captain Marvel are? Like in uh, so Captain Marvel weekend gross was sixty seven million. Wow. Okay. And Wonder Park was 15. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, that's a pretty big gap. Wow. Wow. I'm just going off this one site, so I could, you know, I could have right. not completely accurate information. Yeah. But. It's, it's, it sounds like it's pretty accurate. And then if you want to round out the top five, at least, uh, five feet apart, number three with 13 million. How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. Oh. Hit 9 million. Wow. That's number four. And 
Tyler Perry's A Medea Family <laughs> Funeral is still in the top five. It got seven million. This nice, week. nice, cool. All right, yeah. Um, all right, on on the fly box office on the right? fly. I love it. Thank you, Just Joe. That was pretty awesome. You, you got it. Um, saw a lot of trailers since we talked last. Um, I I noticed uh, I saw a trailer for Critters, a new Critters. binge. <laughs> I can't believe they're still making that. Um, did you ever see that film, The Critters? I don't think so. Oh, the original yeah. Critters? Yeah, like from the yeah. 80s? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yes. well, they apparently they're redoing it. March 21st is coming out. I don't know where. Maybe it's straight to video. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. So, um, but I keep seeing the trailer for uh, Little, which is looking pretty good. I'm really excited. Which one's that? What's that? Little, I don't, I don't think. I um, a little, um, this the this gal, uh, she's like a bully, picks on people. Well, she picks on this kid who says, "Oh, you know, I'd check you if if you are little." And she goes, "Whatever, if I were little, I'd, I, you know, whatever, I'd, I'd still bully you or whatever." And this girl like does this magic thing and says, "You'll be little," and, um. She wakes up the next day little, uh, as like a little kid, and now has to go to school and relive her her years, kind of. Got yeah. it. Got Much it. like the opposite of big. Opps- I was just thinking that. So it's big, but yeah, little. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, so it's so it's a little bit like a little big. bit, <laughs> yes, like big. Got okay. It. Um, it. All right. I'm I'm excited about Shaft. I don't know why. It looks so corny, and that's probably my my favorite corn. Yeah, I think I think they're going for that. So. Yeah, so that works out. Um, what else? A missing link? Uh, eh, eh. Kind of. The trailers that I've seen didn't make me. I mean, I'm sure there's funny parts. You know, the sleeper trailer of the movies that we've seen. Uh, ugly dolls. Like, I don't really want to see that movie. Yeah. But there's a scene in that trailer that we were in a we were in a theater full of kids and Blue and I laughed hysterically at this part. Yeah. And nobody else seemed to laugh. Like we couldn't really believe it that we were the only ones laughing and it's I don't know if you've seen the trailer or not. Yes. Oh no, it's when, it looks good. So the gibberish cat yes. when he speaks. Ah man, we lost it. And and I'm, we were in a theater full of kids, and nobody really laughed as hard as Blue and I. How could they not <laughs> laugh at that? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. We were just we cracked up, and then I mean we we love we liked that part so much that when we got home that night, I looked it up and played it on YouTube because I wanted to hear that gibberish cat voice again. So <laughs> it was pretty. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> but I don't know that we'll see the movie. Yeah, I'll probably go see it just because I have the. The movie uh, A list, right? So I'll check it out. Um, I had others, but apparently my my dark notes erased everything. Curses. I don't know where it went. Um, there's a, a Disney movie coming out in August. Uh, oh, you have a couple there. You got John Wick three, yes. and Longshot. John Wick three and Longshot. Yeah, Longshot looks kind of funny. I think we talked about those last time on the show. Okay. Um, <clears throat> didn't talk about critters. I throw that one in late or later, but um, uh, I'm trying to think of something foul. Mm. Oh well, we'll have to we'll have to get get talk about that later. Um, because I don't know where all my trailers went. Uh, what else? What else did I see? No, well, that's it. I guess I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> Um, okay. next week, what do we want to discuss? What do we want to talk about? Um, cause dreams, dreams was kind of a hit. I really like that one. Yeah. Good. Business. Um, what do you think? What about movies, uh, that are numbers related? I don't know. What hmm. do you think? Or have numbers in the title or, um, just about numbers? Well, there's only one movie that comes to mind when it comes to thinking about. <clears throat> excuse me, about. Don't numbers, say it. Is that? Don't say it. Okay. Don't say it. But yeah, yeah. Um, 
So I don't know that I don't know that the list would be too too lengthy on that. Do you think? Well, just our favorite I'm, ones. It don't have to be the, a whole bunch, sure, sure. right? Yeah, sure. So okay, okay. Well, let's do that. Movies about numbers. And here, Movies can we throw in a numbers. bonus one? Can we throw in a? It's your show, man. You can do whatever good, you want. Good. Let's do this then. So I want to know. What your favorite movie is based on what kind of superpower you want. If you mm. could have any superpower, just one? just one, what would your what movie would relate to that? Okay. Or relate to your superpower? Are you asking that no. now or you want me to think on think it? On and it. Come for, That'll, it. That's our yeah. bonus. That'll be our bonus. All right. Because I mean, we're we're getting into the superhero thing. We're like really getting into superhero stuff right now. So I figured, yeah, that might be a fun one. So yeah, April's gonna be crazy. Endgame, Game of Thrones comes back. Oh. I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be nuts. I like Game of Thrones. Can't wait to see that. Yeah, it's gonna. I'm, I'm excited to watch that as well. So, all right. So there you go. We're gonna talk about movies with numbers with a bonus movie your your what superpower you want so we got both all right well that being said <clears throat> send us your your uh info at 512 podcast or email it to us at shout out at tfwmovies.com you know you could send us a voicemail message at the shout out at, or no at at 512 podcast just saying and you'll hear your lovely voice right here just saying. All right. Well, hey, um, I want to thank Joshua Struthers, Big Checho, and, uh, you know, being a special guest, Joe Ray, you are awesome. Yeah. Or a.k.a. Thank you, just Joe. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you. You you did great. I, I, it was, it was I, I wasn't sure if you thought you'd, you'd be up or able to do this, but you did good. Thanks, man. Yeah, um, and I think you see enough movies to be able to do this. That's totally cool. Uh, just, I think you just happened to catch me on a, a good cycle because usually we don't go to the movies that often. Oh wow! Well, you'll be going a lot because these all these superhero things coming out and yeah, plus yeah, uh, sure. streaming. Uh, you know what? The, uh, we just said it. Uh, uh, Death, Death, Love, and Robots. <laughs> that one. And- yeah. And then the Umbrella Academy. Oh, I want to see that, well. too. I'm looking forward to that as well. So, so yeah. anyway, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm, I'm really grateful. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Um, thank you thank, for having me, man. We want to thank the cast, uh, DJ McGee, Jimmy Harris, Beth Labine. Um, thank you all. And then uh, other other folks that keep us going, Dorothy uh, Fielden, Jackie Harris, and Penny McGee. Because uh, she does a lot for the show, just so you know, a lot. Um, so anyway, um, and then lastly, really, really important, thank you, the audience, because you guys keep us going. i uh, really grateful that every week you listen. Our listenership, I can tell, is going up every week, which is kind of cool. Love that. You guys are awesome. Uh, and uh, that being said... Cut.